Elsa, kind of a random kind of thing, because I'm not, I'm not from Albuquerque. My wife's lived here for about 13 years, and she used to shop with Elsa. Elsa used to have a boutique on Nob, in Knob Hill called the Elsa Ross Boutique. And I guess somehow Elsa had seen my work on social media when I started dating my wife, Shayna. And she went up to Shayna and she said, hey, you know, I saw the paintings that David's making of Holocaust survivors. And I don't tell anybody this, and no one really knows, but I'm also a survivor. And I don't really share my story very often. And I'd love to meet with David uh, to talk to him about what I've, what I've been through. And she's just like this cute, she has kind of a little bit of a British European accent, which is very kind of stately. It's cute, she just likes to have fun. We used to go to the Grove all the time too for brunch. So I never really had grandparents and she's kind of turned into like a grandparent. I mean, how can someone hate Elsa? She's so freaking cute. She was smuggled out of the Warsaw Ghetto when she was five years old and never saw her parents again. And so she says, like, the Nazis, like, took everything away from her. And then after World War II, she was in a Catholic orphanage. I remember she talked about how she had seen the silhouette of the person coming for her at the orphanage, and she thought it was her mother at first. And then she saw her come into the light, and she found out that it was an aunt by marriage, and it wasn't her mother, and she was heartbroken. So for me, I want to kind of make the paintings as authentic and real as possible. The idea that this is a human being in front of you when you see the painting, that it has kind of things that you see unconsciously of your grandfather or your grandmother. You know, the, you could feel the texture and the tactonus of their skin, like holding their hands. And I want that in my paintings. And that's kind of to humanize them. I was born in Benjamin, Poland, it's next to Krakow. They came to the Gestapo, all of a sudden, without knowledge, without information, and they start grabbing everybody on, on cars and bringing it to a certain place, and from there to Auschwitz. And the next day, guest. I saw the guest, Champers, and I saw, I saw all of these things. I saw them coming in and coming out as bodies. And they were, unfortunately, with these thousands and thousands of people, their bodies, they were burned after guests, they were thrown in there, the, the burials, in the lake, in, in, in Birkenau, Auschwitz. You know, as a painter, I want to paint things that are meaningful to me, and that could be meaningful to other people as a way of like marking history. And if I wasn't a painter, I'd probably be a historian or an uh, anthropologist. Painting's kind of the excuse to get to know these people and hear their stories firsthand, and I love that. I don't really know much about my own family's history because my, my father and his father were estranged, so my grandfather I never met. But my, there are stories that uh, my grandfather had written a book about him escaping uh, ethnic cleansing in the Ukraine and Romania to come to America, and the family being in a displaced persons camp in Austria, and then finally making it to the United States and settling in Long Island. And I think that was something that kind of opened my eyes of trying to figure out what was going on with my own ethnicity, uh, being Jewish. Like when I was growing up, kids would throw pennies at my feet because they found out I was Jewish and they wanted me to pick them up. And I'm like, what does that even mean? And my mom's like, well, we're Jewish. I'm like, what does that mean? And kind of meeting survivors, hearing kind of these, these fragments of what they went through in their lives was kind of putting a, a face to kind of what my family had gone through in a way for me to connect with my own heritage. And I was like, how can I make work that humanizes these people, what they've been through and their struggle that can also help humanize other cultures? This is before, before the war. My kindergarten. And I'm here, the only one that survived. And it's Hannah Davison Pankowski. Her mother was an artist. I met her in San Antonio in 
2017. She tells a story about how she was coming home from summer camp on a school bus at right when Poland was being invaded. My name is Hannah Davidson Pankowski. I was born in 1928, September 22nd, in Lodz, Poland. My childhood was a very happy childhood. My less happy day of my childhood was right before the war, when we were in the day camp and enjoying the vacations. And we were told that we the children pack our stuff, we have to return to Lutz. When I left the, this camp, where the door to the bus closed, on the way back to Lodz, we left behind our happy childhood because during the war, there are no children. She talks about how they had um, all the, you weren't allowed to walk on a certain side of the street if you were Jewish. You weren't allowed to learn to read and write at certain points. And so, you just see like this box kind of closing it around her as she tells her story. Nice to see my... We had a museum show uh, in 2019, USC. And they had an opening night where the survivors came in and saw this big painting I had done of them. At the opening actually was John Adler's birthday and I had done a painting of him. He was a survivor that escaped uh, before any World War II and he, and he joined the British military and then fought Nazis in the desert. And it was his I want to say like 97th birthday was on the night of the opening and it was his last birthday unfortunately but when he saw the painting he was like that's me like hey you like talking it was it's like insanely heartbreaking Paintings have kind of a staying power. There's contemplation that happens there. It's a venerated object. It slows people down to want to learn about the person in the painting. It's important to immortalize them because these stories need to be lasting and that they personalize what the Holocaust was all about. And that's what I want to do. I wanted to make it so you can't erase it. You can't delete it.